Hello, we're here at the Oakland Schools with my guest here, Rosalind Gold on Wood She's all over the map with the NBA and the Warriors right now. Came out of Stanford, ball player there, played in a couple Final Fours, and now you're doing everything you can with the Warriors and just all college basketball in the Bay Area. What does it feel like at this point? Um, I'm just happy to be working with uh, great teams, great organizations, companies. I'm just thankful. You know, I remember a point when I was maybe doing one work gig every three and a half weeks, just at a crossroads of saying, can I do broadcasting anymore? And then just a hard work, sometimes doing things for free in this business, just getting a foot in the door and gradually, step by step. Um, and there's more stuff to take, but now to just say, hey, this is a full-time gig, a full-time job. With one of the professors of Fitz and Brooks University here, that's Rod Brooks with me here from KMBR. Um, how are you enjoying yourself out here today? Man, love it, love it. You know, it just watching golf on TV, it's just, it's kind of removed. It's kind of far away, but when you see these guys up close making golf balls do what they wanted to do, it really is, uh, really is cool. Now, you've been in the game, um, being on Sports Talk Radio for a while now. How many years has it been? I've uh, been in the Bay Area for 18 years, August of 1990. Yeah. Wow, wow. Well, and what, how did you get into this? First of all, when did you know that you wanted to enter this? You know, I, I, I knew as a kid, um, you know, I loved football all my life, but I remember being, I don't know, man, eight, nine years old and being more into the pregame shows and the halftime shows than I was in the actual game. And this is well before ESP, and this is when it was just, you know, CBS had the NFC package and uh, NBC had the AFC package and then Monday Night Football back when Howard Cosell was there, OJ Simpson. So this is a long time ago, but I was always intrigued by that. And so, you know, I, I graduated from high school in 1989 and went right to college, and that was right about the time that sports talk radio was still was, was taken off. So I knew by the time I graduated high school that this is what I wanted to get into. And the, the fact that sports talk radio was taken off and it was really booming, that just gave another avenue. You know, you didn't have to go on television, even though ESPN was up and running and, and starting to gain that foothold. You didn't have to go on television. You could do it in radio. So, you know, I, I did a little bit of television. Everybody wants to be on television. So I did a little bit of television. But radio was kind of the, not the easiest lane, but the fastest lane. And so, you know, started a little bit in college, went back to Houston, did it there, and then came out here in August of 97, you know, back on the ticket 1050, you know, when that started. And uh, I've been out here ever since. But, you know, I, I knew, like I said, back when I was a kid, that I was always intrigued by the athletes and what made them tick. And there's only one way, as you know, to find out what an athlete is thinking, and that's to go and talk to him. And there's only one way to talk to him. There's several ways now with Twitter, but there's really only one way to talk to him. That's get a media credential and go and talk to him.